You are all welcome. Last month, we had a wonderful time in his presence. We started The Woman in Me. And what is The Woman in Me all about? You know, it's about us actually knowing ourselves and being comfortable with ourselves. Because a lot of people don't know themselves. But how can you love somebody you don't know? You know, so many things define you. So I think it's about time you allow the creator to define you. The one who created you himself. Let him define you as he created you. Because that remains the authentic you. It is not what anybody else says. But it's the one who created you. For instance, this chair was manufactured for a purpose. If I put it on my head as a hat, I'm sure you'll all think, as mommy gone cuckoo, what's, what's happening? You know? Yeah. So because it wasn't created for a hat. You know, so we need to allow the creator to reveal to us who we are. Because it's all about the image we bear. And if you look very closely at the book of Genesis, what did the devil go after? He went after the image. Anytime the devil comes, he goes after the image that you bear. You will discover that after the devil came, that was when the man and woman realized they were naked. But were they really naked? No, they were not naked. They were clothed in the glory of God. But because God is too holy to look at sin, you know, to behold sin, immediately the devil came, immediately they gave in to the devil, they took on the image of the devil and lost the image of God. So anytime the devil comes, he comes after the image. That's what he came after in the case of Esau. He came after his image as the firstborn. He came after his image as the firstborn. That was what he was after. Esau sold his birthright and he couldn't get it again. He came after the image. So anytime he comes, he comes after your image. And so that's why we must be knowledgeable about who we are. And we also must be knowledgeable about who we are because if you are not knowledgeable about who you are, anything can define you. And this is what gives rise to low self-esteem, you know, women doing all kinds of things that are not convenient in order to gain attention. Because they're not settled in themselves. They don't know the beauty that God created them with. So last month we were able to just treat one, which was the woman in me is made by purpose, by the purposes of God, on purpose, intentionally, and for purpose, for a definite assignment, for a definite mandate. So that's the first thing we said. So the number two thing, which we are going into right now, is the woman in me is the unique image bearer of the almighty God. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man in our image. Let us. Yeah. After our likeness. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of let's, the sea. Let's just say, let us make man in our image after our, our likeness. likeness. Full stop. God said, let us. Now, and he's using plural. Why? Why is God using plural? How many of you know that God is triune? He's a triune being, his father, his son, and his Holy Spirit. But the three are one, one. person. So the woman in me has within her the potentials to manifest the qualities of God. Because if she's created in the image and likeness of God, the offshoot is that, is the potential that has been deposited in her. Am I making sense? Yes, ma'am. If she's created in the image and likeness of God, it means she has the potential to manifest as God. The potentials to manifest as God. The qualities of God. The qualities of holiness, righteousness, dominion, all the qualities of God. Therefore, the woman in me has within her the potentials to reason like God, to relate like God, to hear like God, to speak like God. All the characteristics of God. What do I mean by to speak like God? God speaks with authority and power. God does not think that what he speaks will not come to pass. Anything God speaks becomes what? Law. 
it becomes settled. It becomes done. And the woman in me has that potential. She, because she has the personality, she has the intellect of God, the woman in me is a creator, like the almighty creator. She's a creator. She's unique in herself. You mirror God's divinity in your ability to actualize the unique qualities with which you have been endowed. You mirror God's ability. When you have, you are made in the image and likeness of God, you mirror God's ability. Remember I told you that the devil always comes for the image. When you look at your life, as you are sitting down, you know nobody knows your life as much as you know your life. Yes, ma'am. Nobody knows my life as much as I know my life. Yes, ma'am. As we are all sitting down now, and we are looking at our individual lives, it's not everything that has been sweet. Mm. It is not everything that has been rosy. Yes. We've been through different experiences. But there are other stories about your life, things that you have been through that have not necessarily been palatable. But you see, it is still the same purpose that the, that the devil is after. He's after that image. He wants you not to grow into that image. He wants you not to believe that image. He doesn't want you to believe the word of God concerning you. He wants you to believe the reports of the world, the report of the flesh, and the report of the devil. But he never wants you to believe the report of God. Mm. Why? The ultimate reason, let me tell you a secret. And don't forget this. Don't forget this. Don't ever forget this. The ultimate reason is that the day you discover who you are, the day you truly discover who you are, the day who you are becomes a real reality to you, the day that you know that you know that you know that you know who you are. You understand what I'm saying? When there is no confusion, when there is no haziness, you are so clear about who you are, you become a danger to the devil. You become a danger to him. You become too hot for him to handle. You become a threat to his kingdom. You become a spiritual bulldozer. He can't afford that. You know, one day, I was telling the Lord. I said, Lord, I said, ah, all these, uh, you know, little, little things that happen, you know, that, you know, things, you know, sometimes ministry, um, challenges, sometimes challenges in the home, D different things, you know, different things, different things. Different. I was telling them, I said, well, I said, this season has been tough. I said, honestly, Lord, I am tired. <laughs> I am weary. You know what the Lord said, my daughter, you can't afford to be tired and weary. He said, you can't afford to be tired. And weary. He said, you are gathering women. You are teaching them the way forward. You are teaching them the truth of scripture. You are growing them. They're realizing who they are. They're coming back to attack the devil. And he's losing grip over them. And then you expect him to leave you alone. I said, uh, 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 that isn't going to happen. <laughs> you know, and when God articulated it like that, you know, it gave me a completely different perspective to the challenges that I felt I was facing and made me more of an overcomer. Hallelujah. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So it is not in the interest of the devil for you to understand who you are, mm -hmm. for you to assimilate who you are, mm -hmm. For you to manifest who you are. Yes. That is not in his interest. So, Do you understand? Yes. So he always comes to try to stop that from happening. But guess what? With late. a ministry like this, he's come too late. Hallelujah. You just keep faith Amen. Keep with us and we'll get there. Amen. So on, under that, the woman in me is a unique image bearer of the almighty God. I have an A. You know, I have different points. The woman in me is unique in herself. 
She is unique in herself. She is a unique species. Out of over 3.5 billion women in the world, there is no one exactly like you. Yes, so. You know when you want to travel abroad, you have to do some printing and different things. And that th thumbprint, that thumbprint virtually millions of people. No thumbprint is the same. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that awesome? Awesome. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. You look like you are for a divine purpose. You talk the way you talk for a divine purpose. Mm -hmm. You act the way you act for a divine purpose. Yes, you know your actions are unique to you. Yes, ma'am. You know? Your smile is unique to yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Your figure of speech is unique to you. Yes, ma'am. The way you handle your things are unique to you. Mm -hmm. So you are a unique species in yourself. Amen. You cannot afford to despise yourself. That's right. Because you are unique. You are beautiful in yourself. As you are, I'm telling you, mm. there's nobody as beautiful as you. No yes, ma'am. Nobody as beautiful as you. I'm not psyching you, but that is yes. the truth. Yes. Because your uniqueness is your beauty. Yes, ma'am. Your uniqueness is your beauty. Mm. Why would you want to be like somebody else? Mm. Mm. Why would you want to be like somebody else? Then you lose your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. You lose your uniqueness. We have the capacity as God's image bearer to reflect his love, his goodness, mm -hmm. and his mercy. Mm -hmm. God made you in his image and likeness. The woman in me, therefore, is patterned after the original mold. You are patterned after the original mold. Mm. God made you exactly like himself. The woman in me is a woman in charge. She's a woman of dominion. She's been given the executive mandate to rule here on planet Earth. Rule over the air, the land, the sea. To subdue and to aggressively also pull down the kingdom of darkness. You see, it's not only the devil that knows how to be aggressive. You yourself have to imbibe holy violence and be aggressive against satanic forces. Don't fear the devil. At all. There is nothing to fear in the devil. Mm -hmm. There is nothing to fear in the devil. Let's read Psalm 8. Psalm 8 from verse 1. Let me read the New American Standard. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. Um, from the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. When I consider, this is the psalmist now, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him? And the son of man that you care for him. Yet you have made him a little lower than God. And you have crowned him with glory and majesty. You made him to rule over the works of your yes. hands. So you are a ruler. Amen. Mm. Over the works of God's hands. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heaven, the heavens belong to God. The earth he has given to the sons of man. So we must always strive to be the best we can and reach the highest. We must be as bold as a lion because we are righteous. We are God's representative here on planet earth. We are still going to talk more about that. And we have been given responsibility to uphold and protect creation. So the woman in me is God's image bearer. And she has all these potentials. 